joining is the key. I always use the seminal TED talk of Derek Sibbles to illustrate it. It's called How to Start a Movement, and it illustrates it beautifully with a three minute video. What he's focusing on is the importance of not the leader, but the first follower. And he encourages everyone to have the courage to be the first to follow. And I think they say it all, but I'm I will show you the, the actual video. So ladies and gentlemen, at TED we talk a lot about leadership and how to make a movement. So let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons from it. First, of course you know, a leader needs the guts to stand out and be ridiculed. <laughs> but what he's doing is so easy to follow. So here's his first follower with a crucial role. He's going to show everyone else how to follow. Now notice that the leader embraces him as an equal. So now it's not about the leader anymore, it's about them, plural. Now there he is calling to his friends. Now if you notice that the first follower is actually an underestimated form of leadership in itself. It takes guts to stand out like that. The first follower is what transforms a lone nut into a leader. <laughs> and here comes a second follower. Now it's not a lone nut, it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd and a crowd is news. So a movement must be public. It's important to show not just the leader, but the followers, because you find that new followers emulate the followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people and immediately after, Three more people. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point. Now we've got a movement. <laughs> so notice that as more people join in, it's less risky. So those that were sitting on the fence before now have no reason not to. They won't stand out. They won't be ridiculed. But they will be part of the in crowd if they hurry. So. <laughs> Over the next minute, you'll see all of the, uh, those that prefer to stick with the crowd because eventually they would be ridiculed for not joining in. And that's how you make a movement. But let's recap some lessons from this. So first, if you are the type, like the shirtless dancing guy, that is standing alone, remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals. So it's clearly about the movement, not you. <laughs> okay, but. We might have missed the real lesson here. The biggest lesson, if you noticed, did you catch it? Is that leadership is over glorified. That yes, it was the shirtless guy was first and he'll get all the credit, but it was really the first follower that transformed the lone nut into a leader. So as we're told that we should all be leaders, that would be really ineffective. If you really care about starting a movement, have the courage to follow and show others how to follow. And when you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first one to stand up and join in. And what a perfect place to do that, Ted. Thanks. <laughs>
And you would soon have this confirmed, because just a few days later, we found out that the mailing list had, had already been infiltrated, even before the discussion began. And fourth, and most importantly to me, we had to leverage the power of the crowd. And for this, we had to have a loosely coupled people gravitating around the group, able to act at the right moment by following their own will. We had to be synchronized with the outside. Loose coupling is another important point when organized. The group decided then to make the mailing list archives public for reading. For writing to the mailing list, it still had to be approved. That asymmetrical schema made sense because we had to avoid dissonance, which would make us lose time, which was the only most important asset we had since the demonstration was already announced for a fixed day, May 22. And that also proved to be useful later when I, I was not in the mailing list anymore, uh, I, still was, uh, I still was able to participate in other actions. Next, we start discussing security issues. We discussed what could eventually happen to us in terms of annoyance by the police and the eventual retaliation. One funny thing to say is we actually planned for being arrested the day before the demonstration, and that's what actually happened. The problem is, as the demo day approached, we believed too much and forgot about it. Another security aspect that had to be solved is the security of our information system, namely the mailing list. As I said before, We've been infiltrated from the beginning using a, an easy trick. Someone, probably state police, made an email box with the address looking like the name of one of the involved people and simply asked the mailing list admin to add him. And it worked. We fortunately discovered this quickly, not because we are geniuses, because the real guy searched for his name in Google and found his on our main mailing list. So here's another argument for public mailing list. So we put up a process for securing an identity. We simply set up meetings where we exchange our emails around the deal. So here is a flaw in online communities you must be aware of. Identities are the Achilles heel. Anybody can impersonate anybody. So you have to be very careful in ensuring identity. Because in our case, even though information on the mailing list was public, we did, didn't want to get infiltrated by agents, especially impersonating trusted members who could jeopardize our project simply by disinforming or by putting obstacles to our progress. After this episode, we started discussing legal issues on the mailing list. Someone posted legal text for demonstrations, and we started discussing the proceeding. We needed two volunteers to declare the demonstration to our Ministry of Internal Affairs. This was a, a low request. And that would be me and my friend Yassin. Just to put it in context, the Ministry of Internal Affairs in Tunisia is a big ministry, mostly in charge of national security. So you can imagine we were scared. We even planned for getting arrested the same day. We've chosen not to discuss logistics on the mailing list. We discussed it in regular meetings because our plans uh, had to be secret and anything you put online is not secret anymore. Something that proved to be useful too in the mailing list was what we call the brush principle. 